If you're trying to decide between the Sony FX30 and the a7 IV, one potential advantage of the FX30 is its ability to output raw video over HDMI. I was curious to see what the raw workflow was like, so I rented an Atomos Ninja 5 for a week to check out the ProRes RAW capabilities with the FX30. I did not go out of my way to capture any spectacular footage. I just hung around my house and filmed my cats and dogs. So I actually think that uh, natural lit situations, like really tough uh, with a lot of difficult dynamic range, is a good gauge a uh, barometer <laughs> of whether raw video is worth it over the internal codex of any particular camera. That's my justification. I don't really want to spend too much time about why you would shoot raw, whether that's worth it itself. I just want to kind of touch on the pros and cons of this particular raw workflow, which is the only raw workflow that's available with the FX30. A lot of the disadvantages don't have anything to do in particular with the FX30. They're just sort of like, regardless of which camera you're using, general disadvantages of this workflow. But there's one particular con, and we'll just start off with that, that has to do with the FX30 in particular. The FX30 is a 6K sensor that outputs 4K video internally. Um, Sony says it's about 20 megapixels for video, but I don't know what the vertical and horizontal resolution of that is. But with ProRes RAW, you're getting about a 4.7K file or image, but it's not downsampling from 6K, it's actually just cropping into the sensor to give you the resolution. The files that I recorded are 4,648 by 2,616, so that's the vertical and horizontal resolutions. And again, that's cropping into the sensor to give you that resolution. For comparison's sake, I can show you what that crop is actually doing. So all these shots here were shot with the 24 to 70 at 24 millimeters. The normal APS-C or Super 35 millimeter crop, 25 millimeters is the full frame equivalent of about 36 or 35 millimeters. So that's what you're seeing here. So this is not ProRes RAW, this is the internal recording from the FX30. With the ProRes RAW, the additional crop is going to give you something like a 50 millimeter equivalent to full frame. And I can show you that here. This is a recording with the A7S III with the 24 to 70 zoomed into 50 millimeters. And you can say that that's about roughly equivalent to the FX30 in ProRes RAW. All things considered, you're getting about a micro four thirds size field of view with the FX30 and ProRes RAW. There's potentially a loss of sharpness as well, because again, the internal recording is 6K downsampled into 4K, so there's a lot more resolution that's being squeezed into a 4K file, whereas the ProRes RAW recording, again, is just giving you straight up 4.7K about. Not only that, there's no internal sharpening that's being applied to the footage, so it's probably going to look a bit less sharp. I don't really have any good examples of that to show you, but I have seen some other videos that specifically were looking for sharpness differences. The rest of the cons have more to do with this workflow in general, as opposed to the FX30 in particular. So the next one I will mention is just sort of like the ergonomic and physical hurdles or problems that might come with using an external recorder. The Atomos Ninja 5 or 5 Plus is hot. It runs hot <laughs> and it's loud because uh, all the heat generated from recording the raw files means that there's an internal fan, which is pretty much always spinning up, and it's noticeably audible. It's also relatively heavy. It's a pretty small, about a 5.5 inch screen, but it's completely metal, the whole body, the, you know, everything is metal in order to help dissipate heat. So it is considerably heavier than probably an equivalent 5.5 uh, inch monitor. You're also gonna have to have a battery either plugged in directly to the Atomos Ninja 5. It does take Sony NP style batteries. So those can be pretty big and heavy themselves if you didn't want to run like a V-mount battery that's powering everything together. So there's just like a lot of uh, ergonomic and weight things you have to take into account when using an external recorder on a camera like this. The rest of the cons have to do with the post-production workflow. This is Apple ProRes RAW. So unsurprisingly, it works natively in Final Cut Pro. It also works natively in Premiere Pro, but you don't get as many controls in Premiere Pro as in Final Cut Pro. And we'll get into that here in a second. ProRes RAW does not work natively in DaVinci Resolve. So for me, that would be kind of like the number one deal breaker of this entire endeavor, because <laughs> I like to work in DaVinci Resolve. There are plugins or software that you can purchase 
or that you can use to convert the ProRes RAW into Cinema DNG, which you can then uh, work with in, in Resolve that will give you the RAW controls that you're probably looking for. ProRes RAW is going to bypass the internal noise reduction that you'll get from the internal recordings from the FX30. If you do want to apply noise reduction, and chances are with most of the footage you shoot, you're going to want to apply some kind of noise reduction. Neither Final Cut Pro nor Premiere Pro have noise reduction built in, so that's another software or plugin that you're going to have to purchase. Noise reduction is very computationally uh, intensive, so it's going to be something that is going to put a tremendous workload on your computer. Whether or not your computer can handle it very effectively is going to be something that I can't answer, but it can be very difficult to, to apply noise reduction and and play it back. Your playback could probably will probably be choppy and slow, so it can be really hard to figure out how much noise reduction to apply. Uh, it just really takes a lot of patience, unless you just have a beastly computer that can chew through that noise reduction footage. It's also bypassing the sharpening that is typically applied in camera. Fortunately, <laughs> there is sharpening in Final Cut and Premiere Pro, but it's just something that you're going to have to figure out yourself. If you do want to apply sharpening, like what's the best way to do it? Going back to the raw controls that you get in Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, one of the big advantages of working with raw footage is you should typically get controls for ISO to non-destructively change the ISO that you recorded in camera in post-production. You can do that in Final Cut Pro, but you cannot do it in Premiere Pro. The other big advantage for raw video is typically white balance controls. That's in Final Cut Pro, but not in Premiere Pro. Really, the only thing you can do in Premiere Pro is exposure compensation. I don't know exactly how that works. It seems like it could be very similar to the ISO control, but it's not labeled that. You also have not like the full ISO range that you have in Final Cut Pro to change. The other thing you can do in Premiere is just change the color space that you apply to the footage. The last disadvantage is the big file sizes. So you have two options, ProRes RAW and ProRes RAW HQ. I neglected to try both. <laughs> I think I just shot in ProRes RAW HQ. So this file, for instance, is 22.43 gigabytes and the internal recorded uh, file was only 1.95 gigabytes. So that's more than 10 times the size of the internal recording. And I did record in XAVC HS, which is more compressed. So the if you wanted to record in XAVC SI, those would be bigger, but they also they wouldn't be anywhere near as big as the ProRes RAW HQ file. So a lot of cons. So what are the advantages? Obviously, if you want to have the, the most control, the most quality that you can possibly get out of the FX30, then that's kind of the whole idea behind shooting RAW. So not only do you potentially, if you're using Final Cut anyway, get post-production uh, parameters for ISO and white balance, you also get a 12-bit 4444 recording as opposed to an internal 10-bit 422 recording. So 10-bit records in 1,024 bits of color data per RGB channel, and 12-bit gives you 4,096 bits of color information per RGB channel. I think the total number of colors possible with 10-bit is about a billion, and the total number of potential color captured in 12-bit is like 64 billion. That's a huge difference, but how much of that is actually observable? I, I'm not really sure, because most of our displays are still only 8-bit displays. Some are 10-bit, but none that I'm aware of are 12-bit. So really losing a lot of that information in the displays that we're looking at anyway. I do think that there's probably some, just like resolution can be downscaled into a smaller uh, container or smaller amount of resolution. So 6K to, to 4K, for instance, on the FX30. I think that that is observable. We can see that added detail, even though the output is only 4K. So probably the extra color information is also kind of getting squeezed into what we can actually see on our monitor, but I don't think that the difference is is that big of a deal. But anyway, going back to the pros, again, just having the most flexibility and the most control over your footage is really the whole idea behind shooting in RAW, not l allowing the camera to kind of mess up your footage by applying too much noise reduction. If you really wanna have the most control with your noise reduction, then you're gonna get that with uh, ProRes RAW. The last advantage is cheaper media. So the Atomos recorders utilize SSDs, which you didn't know, are just computer hard drives. And these have been around for a long time, and they're comparatively much cheaper than um, an SD card would be 
and of course, obviously a CF Express card. Those are insanely expensive. So that's kind of a cool thing about these recorders and you're gonna need an adapter to uh, plug this into your computer. But another thing, since these are just you know hard drives, if you plug it into a Thunderbolt or USB 3 uh, port in your computer, then you can actually just work right off of these drives. Probably not the smartest in terms of data management. You definitely wanna back up your footage somehow, but um, you still could just utilize these drives to edit from. I kind of think the cons outweigh the pros in this case for ProRes RAW and the FX30. And really the big disadvantage is the crop. I don't really want to get into a long dissertation about large format versus small format. I think the crop can be utilized in certain kinds of projects. Certain kinds of stories or you know the look of certain project might call for smaller format. And I think that the look that you're getting out of this can be something that's really cool, but it's not gonna be something that you wanna be limited by all the time. So really it is gonna call for a very specific project. So if you have an Atomos Ninja 5 and you wanna use the FX30 on occasion, then, you know, sure, go for it. But it's not something that you should really go out of your way to acquire thinking that you're gonna shoot ProRes RAW all the time. <laughs>